Missy Brooks, one of the most respected officials in the country, will toss the ball up. As we mentioned, she worked with Tom Halid and Nicole Brennan, and we are set for action. And there should be plenty of that this afternoon. There in Sonano jump in the opening tap, batted around and controlled by the Bulldogs. Looked like one of the volleyball games you've been calling here over the last few months. It certainly <laughs> did. Here's Bear at the top of the circle. Sonano comes out to guard her. Meyer being picked up early on the defense by Gabby Marshall. Bear tries to take it inside against Sonano. Twist, fires, and scores. Well, that's going to be a fun one to watch. That was a battle. They just moved out of the way and let the two centers go after one another. Maggie Bear with a nice up and under move. Iowa 2-0. They've knocked off Southern 87-34 and set a school record with their 115 points against the 62 for Evansville. So they're 2-0. The Bulldogs are... 1-0 following a victory over Green Bay on Monday night, 80-67. Hawkeyes with the first turnover. Bear pulls up between the circles. Dinner Beer and Clark. What a match. A great look inside to Bear. That was set up so perfectly. Bear came to the top of the key. They looked for Sonano had to come out. Then got a back screen from Grace Bird to get her free underneath. Megan Meyer battling a former teammate for the rebound and coming up with it for Drake. Dinabir lobs inside. Here's Bear once again, and this time she gets stuck by Sonano, but recovers and scores. This stayed right after it. Didn't let down. Found the ball and nice little hook shot. The lob over the head of Bear and into the hands of Sonano to score for Iowa. And that's how you answer. You go inside to the player that shoots right around 70%. Get it over the top. Bulldogs did not get backside rotation defensively. So far, a game of bigs. The Bulldogs go inside to small and still get a score from Katie Dinnevere. Probably the tallest player on the floor, the smallest player on the floor, but it was good rotation by the Bulldogs. Clark forced to a turnover by Dinnevere. She reached out with that left hand, tried to flick the ball away, and that forced the turnover. And these two have gone at each other before. Yeah, we talked to... Katie Dinamir earlier this morning and she said yeah they've met up a couple of different times and Dinamir with the nice rotation down up and under and they're gonna go at Sonano it looks like they're gonna try to get her into foul trouble you would have to think for as many times as they've gone after her. First Dinamir played at Waukee High School and Clark at Dowling Catholic so plenty of rivalries between those two as Clark slices in and scores for the first time. She's 64% of her shots in the first two games. Yeah, and you can see how good of a ball handler she is, and they just isolate her on one side, let her go one-on-one. -on -one. Warnock took a tough screen that time. She goes down. Sonano clears the rebound. Clark pulls out for three and nails it. Clark, who got 30 points last time these two teams played two years ago in this building with a quick five. Well, she's so good, and she reads the defense so well. Instead of taking it all the way in, a little sidestep out, clears herself, and gets the good look. Well, uh, get the lob inside. Meyer tried to control it. And the turnover will give it back to Iowa. That's Iowa's, I should say, Drake's second turnover. You can see Clark taking it in, looking like she's going to come back out and set it up. Let's the defense rest a second and then pulls the trigger. She's so good at knowing exactly where everybody is on the floor. Hawkeyes trying to take their first lead, go inside to Sonano. She can't finish. Grace Berg's got the rebound. Anna Miller's come in for the Bulldogs. They tried to slip the pass inside to Berg. Unable to control it is Warnock, so Drake gets it back. Miller off the post on the right baseline. The rebound is cleared by Kate Martin. As you see, she's playing with a mask. Has suffered a second broken nose about 10 days ago. And she has the shot blocked by Anna Miller. And Martin playing with that mask. And it's so hard to play with the mask. I'm not sure who gets the assist on that one. If the rim gets the assist on that one, that ball was tipped right off the rim, right back to Denebeer. All she knows is she will take the basket, putting Drake up by three. Take them any way you can get them in this ball game. Warnock from the corner for three. And that's the player you have to be aware of. She just kind of quietly goes about her business, knows where to be on the floor, and she will knock down big three-pointers. Berg had a nice job to get the open shot and couldn't finish it, and the ball out of bounds off Iowa. 
Hawkeyes will make their first change, and Anderson O'Grady, a sophomore from Aurora, Colorado, at 6'4", will come into the lineup. For the Bulldogs, Berg and Denebert leave in to take their places, Taylor McCauley and Courtney Becker. Get a look at that tipped ball right off the rim, right back to Denebert. Meyer cranks the three. It won't go. Clark's there for the rebound. Clark pulls up, drills a three, and it's short. And the rebound run down by the former Hawkeye, Megan Meyer. Meyer racing into the front court against Gabby Marshall. Marshall, one of Meyer's best friends on the team when she had her time at Iowa. The two of them were close friends and teammates and now matching up against one another. Now Molly Davis, who wears number one, comes into the lineup for Iowa. She's the transfer from Central Michigan, and it'll be interesting to see how Caitlin Clark plays with a different point guard in the lineup, and now she becomes a two guard. I think this just makes Iowa a little tougher. You have multiple players to guard. It gives Clark a little more free reign to move around on the floor, find different spots to get open. The clear for Warnock. She misses that time. Courtney Becker runs down the rebound. Outlets to Byer at midcourt. Five minutes gone in the first quarter. Taylor McCauley missed last year with knee surgery. Handles the basketball. Now Becker looks inside. Shot clock rolls down to 12 as Meyer tries to break down Marshall. Gets a screen and uses it to score. And that's one of the things that Coach Glitter talked about. You have to understand how to handle that screen. You can't get too deep, and that's exactly what happened that time. Meyer was able to step back and knock down the three. Meyer, newcomer of the year in the Valley a season ago after transferring from Iowa. Quick move to the basket by Davis, and she leaves it on the rim. And a long rebound over the head of O'Grady and picked off by Meyer. McCauley looking inside. I with that player-to-player -player defense that they are known for. Driving the baseline, Becker to score, and the Bulldogs have taken great advantage of scoring in the paint. They really have. It looks like that is kind of the initial game plan, that they're going to take it into the paint and try to challenge the bigs. Great pass by Caitlin Clark. Dribble drive, draw the defense. Nice little bounce pass, drops a dime over to O'Grady. O'Grady, the recipient of the ball, a sophomore from Aurora, Colorado. It averages four points thus far for the Hawkeyes. Here's Meyer looking for two in a row, not this time. Anna Miller with an offensive rebound, and O'Grady is on her back. And we've got a timeout with 3.42 left to play in the first quarter. The Bulldogs getting a nice balance. They've had four different players score coming off the bench to nail this one. Courtney Becker, and it's a three-point Bulldog advantage. Lisa Bluger directing the Hawkeye program for the 23rd year. Hard to believe it was 23 years ago that she left Drake for Iowa, and she is number four among active Division I coaches in victories with 821. Yeah, quite impressive and uh, really did a great job here at Drake building this program and then heading on over to Iowa and continuing to win, and that's all she really has ever done is just win basketball games. Three-time Valley Coach of the Year during her Senate break where she won 187 games. Hawkeyes with the ball, down by three. O'Grady working the post right now against Bears, and Anna getting an early rest. Hannah Stolke, number 45, into the lineup for Iowa, and she's a freshman who the Hawkeyes are very high on. And they say she has a lot of upside, and Caitlin Clark said she really just doesn't know how good she can be, and that's pretty high praise coming from Caitlin Clark. She went to Cedar Rapids, Washington, committed to Iowa after her freshman year. Bear with the miss, but O'Grady on the foul. Bulldogs continue to feed the ball inside to the post. We're going to get a substitution. O'Grady going to step out. Sonano coming back in. O'Grady picking up two fouls in place of Sonano. So that change takes place and sends Bear to the free throw line. She's coming off a good opener against Green Bay the other night. 17 points with 6 of 10 from the floor, had 8 rebounds and a couple of steals. And that's a, a tough opponent for the Bulldogs going up against Green Bay. They looked very comfortable, very good. The motion offense looked solid for the Bulldogs, and they are hoping that that continues here today. There with 8 points in the quarter. That's exactly what she scored in the entire game the last time the Hawkeyes were here at the Knapp Center. 
Becker's got the rebound. Dinabir leads the break. From outside, it is Becker on the miss, and the rebound is scooped up by Gabby Marshall, the senior from Cincinnati. And you can see what Coach Bluter talked about, the fact that they needed to get back in transition defensively, and they did a good job that time. Bulldogs did get a good look at it. Got the rebound, and they were able to get down and, and get the ball to Clark. Clark with a quick seven for Iowa. Berg inside, and puts it in. He's able to get around the freshman Stolke to score. He made a nice move. Might have gotten away with a little bit of a hook around Stolke to get to the basket. Dinabir and Clark go to the floor. Dinabir with her second takeaway against Clark. Berg got the basketball. And there's a timeout called by Berg to save the possession. Couldn't find anybody open, but that's uh, two former Metro Iowa Des Moines Metro players going up against one another. Denebeer going after Clark. Well, you said it about Denebeer at the start of our telecast. Same about Clark. Two players that just don't back down. Yeah, neither player is going to back down. And you can see the Bulldogs spread the floor that time. Got Grace Berg open, and Denebeer just not letting up. She'll just stay after you. And all I know is I would never want to be guarded by Katie Dinamere for a full 40 minutes. <laughs> and that's twice in the first quarter that she has picked the pocket of Caitlin Clark. She just doesn't back down. She's small, but she's mighty. And she understands when to try to take that chance to get in and knock the ball away on the dribble. And though she may be the best athlete in her family, she's not the best golfer. She is not. Her brother's a pretty darn good golfer. Her dad's a golf professional. Berg looks inside. Nice cut by Meyer to score. Really good cut by Megan Meyer to get her second basket. Meyer is so good at going back door and really knows how to read the defense. Got the step on Stolke and was able to get to the hoop. Sonato gets the feed inside and Bear fouls her. Bulldogs wanted to make sure they had good motion, good rotation, back door cut. Everybody has their eyes up looking for a teammate. This is Iowa's biggest deficit of the season. Warnock back into the lineup for the Hawkeyes, and Stolke will leave. As Sinano knocks down the free throw, she has led the nation in field goal percentage in the last two years, and 13 of 18 in this young season, averaging five and a half rebounds as well. Honorable mention, All-American. You know, Iowa, as everybody remembers, Megan Gustafson, who played here several years ago, they have had a player that has led the nation in field goal percentage for the last five years. So that tells you how dominant they have been in the post. And it's the former Drake assistant, Jan Jensen, who works with the big players. She did it so well here at Drake with their post players, just carried on that coaching over to Iowa. Screen set by Bear. Denebeer pitches off for Berg, looking for three. It falls short. And underneath Bear gets tied up with Sonano in the battle for the rebound. And the foul goes against Maggie Bear. And Bear draws her second. That's something that the Bulldogs were hoping would not happen. It's they need to have Bear on the floor for them. And we're going to get a good look at two players just battling for position. Missy Brooks felt like maybe Bear had a little bit too much of Sonano's arm. Lob inside from Clark to Sonano. That combination has worked so effectively for, seems like, so many years now. Yeah, it really has, and uh, great move on the inside by Sonano. Rebound taken down by Kate Martin. Martin considered one of the glue players on this squad. Maybe she doesn't get the headlines the others do, but she's significantly important to the Hawkeye attack. Clear out for Clark, drives in, and gets fouled by Meyer and has a chance at a man one. Meyer trying to stay with her as she drives the baseline side. Gets a little bit of a screen, bodies up, and just couldn't get enough of the basketball to stop and give up that and one. Well, so many things, so many plaudits for Caitlin Clark. First team All-America this season, first team All-America last season. So many great honors in her career and, and more to come. She misfires on the three throw, unable to complete the three-point play. But the ball went out of bounds off break, and so it's the chance for Iowa to cut into a Bulldog lead. In fact, to take the lead if they score. 
Molly Davis to trigger. He's been a starter all her career until coming to Iowa and now working off the bench, which she knew she would do. She drives the baseline, kicks it off. Marshall finds Martin. Hawkeyes moving it well, really well, until Sinano gets open, puts up a hook shot and scores. Great ball reversal by Iowa that time. And they were very patient as they moved the ball around a couple of times. Players get the ball in their hands, look to maybe shoot it, but gave it up, made the pass. Drake down by one, down for the first time in the ball game, and the Hawkeyes are on an eight to nothing run as the quarter draws to an end and the Bulldogs play for the last shot. Dinabir with the kick from McCauley. Two seconds on the clock. Bird drives and scores. Great takes the lead on the Bird layup at the end of the quarter and after one period of play, and it was a really well played first period, it is Drake 23 and Iowa 22 as the Bulldogs that time executing the final second shots of the first quarter very well and getting the layup for Bird. Drake has a one point lead after a quarter at 23-22 on the Bird layup to end the first period to play. Well, the Bulldogs and, and Iowa shooting very, very well, high percentage over 50%. The paint has been successful. The three point shot has not been as we take a look at Lisa Brinkmeyer, former Bulldog with the Bulldog hat, Jan Jensen, former teammate, now a Hawkeye assistant coach with her, Ted, Ted Vendeventer, the a husband of Lisa Brinkmeyer out there with her and she's had quite a battle with brain cancer and therefore the t-shirts for Brink's bench and a stirring moment here. Yeah, it was nice. They honored uh, Lisa and he here you get to take a look at uh, Brink's bench t-shirts. They are available until November 20th, but uh, Lisa battling cancer and and uh, fighting very, very hard and a lot of support from the community and her teammates and former coaches and a nice way to honor Brink. And I'll tell you what, if anybody's gonna do it, Brink's gonna battle hard and, and come out on the right end. The Bulldogs are in fact wearing Brink's bench t-shirts in honor of Lisa Brinkmeyer. Iowa coaching staff wearing those uh, gray t-shirts as well. It's a Brink's bench as uh, they coached her and then she uh, get to see Coach Bluter with her Brink's bench t-shirt on coached her as a player and brings battled injuries her entire career, but uh, also was on the coaching staff with them here at Drake. Peter Sinano inside and she has another chance to demand one after maybe a bit of a slow start. She really has picked it up now, has 10 points. I don't believe she scored for the first four minutes, but since then has really made up for it. She's done a good job of finding the open spot and what a great feed by Warnock. Just a nice little bounce pass between two defenders. So Sinano has 10 points early, make it 11. And the Hawkeyes, after trailing at the end of the quarter, lead to start the second quarter. One more thing about the Hawkeye coach connection and Lisa Brinkmeyer. They have remained very loyal to her, visited her a lot in the summer, especially when she went to Iowa City for a lot of her treatments. It's been a, a great relationship as Dinnerbeer knocks down the three for the Bulldogs. Well, we knew it was going to be this kind of a ball game back and forth. These two teams never let us down. They always play a very spirited game. Break by one in the basketball early in the second quarter. Miller puts the ball to the floor against Sinano, takes it right to her, and a travel is called on Miller. Sinano's defense gets some credit there. And moving the feet, and Miller decided that she was going to put the ball on the floor and going to challenge Sinano. Just could not get it done. Nice pass inside. And then the block. I think one of the things the Bulldogs have established early is they're going to take it to Sinano and not be intimidated by her size and her presence. And they have not yet been able to get her in any kind of foul trouble here early in the first half. She's been very smart about how she's moving her feet. Martin at the top of the circle being guarded by Gildner. Once again, Dinnerbeer paired off with Clark who steps back, misfires on the three, and Burt has the rebound. The trailer is Burt. Bulldogs work inside early and then they've tried to be successful outside. Dinnerbeer shows it, drives inside, scores it and gets fouled. What a move by Katie Dinnerbeer. That's something that she has perfected 
throughout her entire career. She just is not afraid to go in and absorb some contact, is able to maintain control and scoop it up and under. And it is Caitlin Clark committing the foul. So Katie Dinnerbeer, who does what she needs to do in terms of scoring, didn't need to score a lot the other night against Green Bay, got six points. She's already had nine thus far tonight. You know, I think Dinnerbeer is a player that understands the opponent, understands the competition, and knows what she needs to do to help her team win. And if it's distributing the basketball, then that's what it's going to be. Clark to Sonano, and the moves that Sonano has under the basket are extremely impressive. Yeah, she just is very agile underneath and can go with either hand. Dropped a little bit of weight in the offseason, made her just a little bit quicker. Travel is called on Megan Meyer, and the Bulldogs have committed their seventh turnover. And I will with four turnovers. And Allison that's... Pullman in her second year against the on the Bulldog bench. Dinnerbeer chasing Clark. Clark finds Sonano. Working against the freshman as the Bulldogs tried to guard her with freshman Tayton Gray from Lenexa, Kansas at 6-2. And it is Gray who commits the foul. Bulldogs had changed up and picked up man-to-man. -man. Burke coming in from the backside to try to get the block. Sonano, a good free throw shooter. Perfect in four tries so far this afternoon. And she already has 14 points. Got 27 the last time she was on this floor two years ago against the Bulldogs. And she misses one after hitting her first floor. Sarah Beth Gildner with an outstanding three-point shooter handling the basketball. Lobs it inside. Burt with a quick pitch. And then the drive by Meyer, and from behind, she scores. And from behind, she gets fouled by Gabby Marshall. That's twice that Megan Meyer has cut back door and been hit with a great pass. And you have to go out and guard her, and she read that perfectly. She was on the move. Marshall lost sight of her, and she was able to get by her. And you never know how a player is going to react when they face their former teammates. Well, Meyer has done everything that I'm sure she would hope to do against her former teammates. Yeah, she is, you know, it's it's always, you always have these questions and, and you wonder how your teammates, former teammates are going to react to you when you're out on the floor. But you know, once, once that ball is thrown up and tipped for the first time, everything goes away and you just play basketball. Some players get the nerves, they can't get the job up. Terrific effort from behind by Bird to tip it away from Sonato. Yeah, she saw that coming and was at the free throw line and hustled down from behind, able to tip it away. See, they're playing in the front. They are fronting. Sonano got the backside help that time. McCauley gets a hand on it and knocks it out of bounds. 22 on the shot clock as Iowa will inbound. Kate Martin, the senior from Edwardsville, Illinois. Last year averaged seven points a ball game, five rebounds. The Leafs, the Bluegers team. Again, a deflection by McCauley. Two deflections and the Bulldogs get the turnover. Pulled down by Tayden Gray. McCauley drives the baseline. Puts it up and misses it, and the rebound is taken by Martin. Hawkeyes down by three. Clark goes inside against Dinabir. Can't finish, but gets her own rebound, and will bring it back out and try it again, and miss again. She's now missed three in a row. Gray with the rebound for the Bulldogs. Dinabir, hesitation dribble, gets to the baseline. Finds an open gray at the top of the circle. Bulldogs now have McCauley getting the ball inside. And Grace passing has been very sharp as Grace Burke gets her second basket. Passing has been very good and the rotations have been very good. The cuts have been very sharp. Martin misses from long range and the three-point try out of bounds to the Bulldogs. Gray will leave, Meyer will leave for Drake. Good ball rotation, and again, just trailing that cutter as they cut through, gives the Bulldogs the advantage, and then they're getting the good pinpoint passes, able to complete it. Drake's Anna Miller getting extended playing time while Bear is on the bench with two fouls. 
And Sarah Beth Gilder knocks down her first basket of the ball game. And the Bulldogs are now on an 8-0 run. And a timeout will be taken by the Hawkeyes. Drake with an 8-0 run. Is enjoying their biggest lead of the afternoon at 5.57. Left at 5.54 left to play in the first half. So early was Caitlin Clark for Iowa. She got seven of their first nine points. Since then, 14 unanswered points by Monica Sanano. Well, and this is how she's been doing it. The Bulldogs have fronted her, have not gotten the backside help, and she's able to convert and move without the basketball. She does such a great job of making herself available for her teammates, and then Dinabir on the other side for the Bulldogs, stepping back, knocking down the three, running the break, getting a little kiss off the rim and an assist off the rim to get the two. Bulldogs led in scoring by Dinnerbeer with nine, and we mentioned Sonano with 14, leading the way for the Hawkeyes. Iowa really hasn't played from behind all season with two blowout victories over Southern and Evansville, so they're finding themselves in an unaccustomed position early in this one. From the corner, it's Martin looking for the three ball, and the rebound is batted right back to Martin, but it knocked away from her. It's loose. Driving to the floor forward is Gilder to save it for Drake. And Meyer comes up with a loose basketball. Megan Meyer, three out of six shooting the basketball thus far. Bulldogs as a team, 15 out of 25, 60%. Iowa at 46%, 11 of 24. Dinderbeer falls down as that time she got tied up with Davis and the shot won't go for three and the rebound comes to Hannah Stolke. Off the baseline, the score by Clark. That's just tough to stop. Everybody goes to the other side of the floor. They let Clark go one on one. Gildner, two in a row from behind the three point line. When she gets hot, she gets hot. Clark trying for the answer, but couldn't get it. And Courtney Becker is there to clear down the rebound. Becker off the bench with her third rebound. Again, Miller with extended playing time while Bear remains on the bench. Becker looking for McCauley, nearly a steal by Clark. McCauley gets it back and then she gets fouled by Martin. McCauley with those long arms, able to main, con maintain control of that basketball. Gildner with the three. And they, when she's in a rhythm like this, they want to find her, try to get her open so she can get the clean looks. Gilder, 31% from the three-point line last year. She feels, and the Bulldog coaches agree, a much better shooter than that. And so far this year, she's been much better behind the arc. Just almost looks more comfortable this season. Maybe not pressing as much as she was a year ago. Dinabir with a kick. Bergen Meyer replaced Dinabir and Becker in the Bulldog lineup. Berg, four rebounds in addition to her eight points. She also has an assist and a steal. Molly Davis, 5'7", senior from Midland, Michigan. Again, played three years at Central Michigan. Here's Clark, one-on-one -on -one against Geldner. Geldner fouls her. Well, they know what to do. They get the ball in the hands of Clark, let her go one-on-one. -on -one. She is so tough to stop when she puts the ball on the floor, protects it as she goes against two defenders and powers it up to the glass. We asked Lisa Bluter earlier today, is there anything at this point that surprises you about Caitlin Clark? And she says, never her baskets, but often her passes. She is a great passer and she does a great job. And everybody thinks of her as a scorer because that's kind of the highlight reel that everybody sees in her range that she can knock them down from anywhere on the floor, but she is an excellent passer. McCauley beat the Hawkeye defense, got an open three, couldn't finish it, and Marshall comes the other direction. Clark off the Sonano screen. Clark with the pick and roll to Sonano, who scores her 16th point of the first half. And that comes from playing together for so long. That was just, she didn't even look. She knew she was going to be there and uh, puts the ball between two defenders right to Sonano. You can almost see that play coming, couldn't you? Yeah. I mean, it was an easy setup. She pointed to give me the screen up top, and you roll to the basket. Gilder looking for some help against the defense of Davis. Davis has her all bottled up and gets the five-second call. Bulldogs just could not shake loose of that defense to try to get open to save Gildner. 
Dinabir back in to play the point, and Tayden Gray, the 6'2 freshman, for the Bulldogs in to play the middle. And now let's see if the Hawkeyes try to use the inexperience of Gray and work the ball into Sinano. They've done it without Gray in the lineup anyway. They're both down there leaning on one another as two centers would do to try to get position and gain the advantage. Marshall can't finish. Gildner's got the rebound. Break out rebounding Iowa so far. Berg works against Stolke. Puts a move on her, goes to the baseline, tries to reverse inside, and the ball batted out of bounds by Clark. So 15 seconds for the Bulldogs to shoot. At 2.54 left to play in the first half. And Grace Berg trying to take advantage of the freshman, see if she could get her on the baseline, but a good job of shutting it down. Gildner works it to Denebeer. Again, Davis has got the defense on her. They clear for Denebeer. She comes down the lane, puts up a shot, and scores it with one on the shot clock. Katie Denebeer, great court presence. She's got 11 early. Clark tries to answer at the other direction. She can't off the rim. And the rebound is grabbed by Peyton Gray. Bulldogs fast breaking. Pass for Denebeer. And Clark and Denebeer collide. Lisa Bluter quite angrily standing up and wanting a foul called on Denebeer. The officials are going to confer and and they're going to say nobody saw a clear shot of it and so it's going to the call is going to stand. Lisa Bluter pleading her case. Hard to tell there if Denebeer did touch it at the end. Shot from the corner won't go by Gildner. And an offensive foul is called on Denebeer. Well, things are things are getting intense here in the first half, and uh, you know these two teams have played against one another for a long, long time, and it is always a very heated rivalry, and it's always a great game. And of course, whether the ball was in or out, that occurred right in front of Lisa Bluter. She thought she had just as good an angle as the officials did. <laughs> well, if anybody did, she did. She was right there. Clark for three. Five of 11 for three coming into the game. Travel. And the ball goes back to Drake. Well, Davis I... snuck in and, and got the steal. And the, these guards for Iowa have a tendency to do that. They'll hang around, try to get that inbound pass. And it looks like the official thought she drug her foot when she picked it up. Ashley Iams, the 6'1 sophomore from Ames, onto the court for the Bulldogs. Berg with a pitch for Gray. Gray looking for three. Right underneath is Iams to clean it up and score for Gray. Backside or weak side rebounder in Iams, and she was right there. Nobody to contest it. Lob inside. Sinano works inside against the freshman, and Gray commits the foul. That'll be her second. Sinano right back to the line where she has already been five times this afternoon and hit four of them. Well, just like the Bulldogs were going to work the inside and work the paint, Iowa now is going inside to Sonano and look at those two battle. And Gray did just dip those hands a little bit. Got a piece of Sonano who goes back to the free throw line. Sonano described by her coach as incredibly, unbelievably consistent. Well, when you're shooting 70%, that's pretty darn consistent. Yes, but is. she is good. And you had mentioned the fact that she dropped a little weight uh, over the summer and and can get up and down the floor a little bit is a little bit more toned and stronger and that's just going to help the Hawkeyes down the stretch. So 35 of the Hawkeyes 39 points scored by Clark Asanano. That one two punch. Dinabir into the paint. Looks for help. Lobs it inside to Miller. Miller off the rim. Sonano high for the rebound. Sonano with her fourth rebound. Boy, they got the mismatch that time and could not make anything out of it, and the Hawks push it down the floor. Selkie converts at the other end. So a moment ago, Drake's seven-point lead, now shaved to a pair. On top, it's Berg, guarded by the freshman Stolke. 
tries to break her down, goes into the lane, gets her own rebound, puts it up and in. It's one thing that Bulldogs are doing very well. They're staying after it. They're staying after the missed shots, getting their own offensive rebounds and putbacks. So far, Iowa's out-rebounded opponents this year, 51 to 22. And again, against lesser competition, but the Bulldogs have had the better end of it on the rebounding category. They've really made that a priority here in, in this ball game in the first half to go to the glass on both ends. Hawkeyes play for the last shot. Less than a second difference between the shot clock and the first half clock. They love it in Clark's hands. They get it in Clark's hands. This time she misses. Rebound grabbed by Meyer, and Drake will take a four-point lead to the locker room at halftime. It's high scoring, just like we expected. It's intense, just like we expected. And halftime, Bulldogs by four. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of adjustments both teams make in the locker room here at halftime because they're going to come out with maybe a little bit different game plan. But what's worked for Drake and what's worked for Iowa is pretty good so far. Absolutely. At halftime, it's a four-point Drake lead. It's straight 45 and Iowa 41. Cardinals. Yeah, that's going to be a fun one to watch, and it's going to be a good test for Belmont. And we are underway in the second half. Drake with the possession of the basketball to begin things. Maggie Bear, who played only five plus minutes in the first half because of fouls, back in. And the fact that Allison Coleman was able to sit her out and the Bulldogs maintain the lead could be a key factor down the stretch. Iowa going to continue to stay in that man to man defense. Dinebeer continues to penetrate and score. She is six for six, has 13 points, and that lane has been open for her tonight. And they were very patient on that offensive set. They took their time, and then Dinebeer able to get around the defense for the easy layup. Drake's biggest lead has been nine. Bear with the defense, Sonano with the miss. And that's what they were missing when Bear was out of the lineup. Is that defense, those long arms, gets the block on Sonano. Just a little too tall with that pass working the high-low game. Bear tells Berg, my fault. She tapped herself and said, that was on me. That pass had way too much air under it. Yeah, and they had it as Berg had the defender pinned. Lob comes inside to Sonano, and she's able to score against Bear. And you have to believe that Iowa's going to go right back after Bear, see if they can get a quick third foul on her. Gildner knocked down a pair of threes in the first half, gives it up for Berg. Meyer works against Marshall. And inside, there's contact. Berg doing a great job of backing down Warnock. Had the whole middle of the lane calling for the basketball. High-low look. Able to draw the foul on Warnock. Warnock. One of the, as you mentioned, more of the quiet heroes of this Hawkeye team. Got a three-point basket in the first quarter and has not scored since. As Berg steps to the line and knocks down her ninth point. First team all-conference last year, all-conference preseason this year, is the senior from Indianola who knocks down both free throws. And the Bulldogs lead by six. Martin locks inside Sinano. And there's... Uh, offensive foul called against Sonano, I believe. And uh, once again, Lisa Bluter is angry. No, they're going to call it travel, not a foul. They call it travel on Sonano. Lisa Bluter is hot on the Hawkeye bench. Well, and she wanted a flop call. And uh, Bear stood right there as Sonano lowered the shoulder, took the contact, but Sonano shuffled the feet. Lot inside, then a beer. From outside, it's Gildner looking for a third three. In and out. Bear with an offensive rebound. And they're going to call it a block, and the alternating possession is going to give it to Iowa. Well, Gildner had another great look at it, just rimmed around and popped out. A lot of players going after this rebound. Warnock on the backside. Gets on top of it, gets the jump ball. What the Gallison Pullman asked of her squad, no hesitation on the shots. If you've got to take it, and I get the feeling there is no hesitation. Well, I think if you're feeling pretty good about the way the offense is moving, and they are running that motion offense very well, if you have the open look, do not hesitate. Just let it fly. 
Warnock against Berg. Clark guarded by Denderbeer. What a matchup that has been. Denderbeer takes her inside, changes hands with the basketball, and this is the shot. Bear is there to clear the rebound. Denderbeer hesitates and dribble, tries to get around Clark, and Clark is able to pick it up. Hawkeyes have a three on two. Clark in the middle has it blocked by Gelder. Berg fires inside the Bear, who ran the court well for an open shot, but she couldn't finish it. Just could not get those shoulders turned, just needed to catch, come down, take her time. Sonato inside, and Bear draws her third foul, and it's a chance at another and one for Monica Sonano. You can just tell that the level is rising, the intensity level is rising, and Bear and Sonano have gone after one another the entire third quarter, and Sonano, a little momentum behind her, goes right at Bear. And Bear picks up the contact and the foul. Sonano moved over the 1800 point mark in her career. She only needed four. She surpassed that a long time ago as she now has 23 points. Mello looks inside, draws Sonano out. Meyer tries to race around Marshall. Cuts underneath her, can't finish it. And grabbing the rebound is Meyer, but she stepped out of bounds with it. And so the ball goes back to Iowa. You know, with Miller in the lineup, and, and Bear does this too for the Bulldogs. When she's in and she's at the top of the key, that brings Sonano out. And she's, they're going to have to come out and defend that. That opens up the middle, and the Bulldogs are going to have to look for cutters into the middle of the paint. Seven fourteen to go in the third quarter. Drake's biggest lead has been nine. That was midway in the second quarter. I was only lead with two points at 9.38 in the first quarter. Clear out for Clark. The Bulldogs really defender Miller doing a good job coming out to help defensively. Again, they're butting the ball in Clark's hands and Denebeer doing a good job denying her from going inside. Shot clock is down to seven. Davis has come in for Iowa. Here's the three-point try, nothing but net for Gabby Marshall to tie the score at 49. Gabby Marshall has struggled a little bit this season, shooting it from beyond the arc, and she knocked that one down. And you're going to maybe see her reaction as they skip the ball over the top of the defense. And she looks and palms to the sky going, finally, I knocked one down. But she had missed her first eight threes, two of them this afternoon. And she is a 41% three-point shooter on her career. So you knew it was just a matter of time. Here's Denebeer. He gets the ball to her on the baseline. And somehow, off balance or whatever, she's putting it in and hasn't missed a shot. Seven for seven. Now moving on that curl cut down the lane. Again, gets the contact, and I think she welcomes that as she goes up, able to kiss it off the glass. Spent a lot of time on the court, but it hasn't bothered her. I mean, on the court, laying down, getting knocked down. Here's Marshall for three, and she answers with back-to-back -back threes after missing her first eight three attempts this season. And that's what you have to be afraid of if you're the Bulldogs. When she starts knocking them down, she gets hot. You have to get out and defend now. She's knocked down two of them. Hawkeyes back in front of 52-51. McCauley, baseline to Miller, who turns it over, and the ball goes back to Iowa. And again, Sonano at 6-3, leaning on her, and that's not an easy matchup for her to try to catch and move. The ball fake got the defense to move a little bit. That left Marshall wide open. You can see Berg going with the fake, and Marshall then squares it up and knocks it down. Denebeer meets Clark at the midcourt line. Sonano outside. Here's Warnock for three. And suddenly it's three threes in a row for Iowa. And they've come from six back to four up at 55 to 51. And Allison Coleman will need a timeout with five minutes and 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Hawkeyes, who led for less than a minute in the first half, have now taken their biggest lead in the game on three consecutive threes and lead 55-51. Took that timeout. Needs to stop the flow of the game and stop the momentum of the Hawkeyes. Now coming out of this timeout, see if the Bulldogs can get a big bucket, a much needed bucket. Becker and McCauley inserted for the Bulldogs at the timeout. Gray missing the shot. Rebound run down by Molly Davis. The senior transfer from Central Michigan, and that ball going off the foot of Becker. 5.15 to go in the third. 
Iowa, as we mentioned before, has won 18 of the last 19 matchups in this series. But here in the Knapp Center, a different story. Five of the last six games determined by single digits. Sinana with a miss, and Becker gets her fourth rebound. Boy, and credit Taden Gray for just going straight up, hands straight up, not trying to dip, not trying to block the shot, and Sinano overshot it. Davis gets the turnover against Meyer, and for the Bulldogs, that's their 14th turnover, while Iowa has half that, seven. The Hawkeyes try to continue their run. Sinano at the high post. Marshall has been hot with a three-point shot in this quarter, but she's not able to get there. Clark misfires from three. Sinano tries to grab the rebound. There is contact underneath. And a foul is going to be called against Ray. I believe that's going to be on Gray. And Gray with her third foul. Sinano has picked up about seven fouls on Drake thus far. 55-51 Iowa with 4.45 to go in the third. And Drake turnovers while the Bulldogs just six points on seven Hawkeye turnovers. Marshall on the left wing where she's been hot. The Bulldogs will come out and play zone. Clark looks inside for Warnock who cuts. They can't get it to her. Now with five seconds on the shot clock. Shot misses by Marshall and Miller has the rebound. A scrap after the loose ball. Davis came in, tried to pick the pocket of Denevere and they hustle after it. Those are the ones, those 50-50 balls that you stay after and win. Those are gonna help you win the ball game. Team fouls even at two here in the third quarter. Denevere being watched by Marshall as Clark now has the defensive assignment against McCauley. Sinano comes out against Miller. The ball thrown away by Drake. The Bulldogs 14th turnover and the Hawkeyes charge up the floor trying to extend their four point lead. Sinano inside. Miller provides the defense. Sinano does not get the shot. Denimir the other way with a skip pass to Meyer. Takes a dribble, takes a shot, hits the basket. What great court vision to make that cross-court pass, and then Meyer with the patience, give the ball fake, make the defense fly by, and knock down a big three. She showed great patience and poise. Here's Clark feeding Sinano. Sinano trying to work against both Berg and Miller, misses the shot. Hawkeye's offensive rebound, Warnock for three. McKenna Warnock, three threes in the ball game, two here in the quarter. She had 15 points against Evansville the other night, six of seven shooting overall. And the Hawkeyes get called for a foul. McKenna Warnock gets her second foul. Good patience by Meyer as she's able to let the defense go by, put the ball on the floor, square it up. And then Warnock, who's heating up for the Hawkeyes, knocks down a three with the answer. Meyer tries to answer with a three, but first of all, there's a foul called. Meyer pushed off to get open. Nope, not was not Meyer, it was inside. It was on Miller, set the illegal screen to get Meyer open. That'll be her first foul, and the team fouls are now even at three. Remember, in women's basketball, at five and a quarter, that's when the bonus clicks into effect. Caitlin Clark. Bringing the ball up the court. Shot 16 times, made six of them thus far. And that time Davis trying to find a cutting Marshall. The pass behind her, the miscommunication by Iowa, results in the turnover, and that will be their eighth. It split, split two players. O'Grady was down there posting up, and Marshall came flying by on the baseline. Couldn't connect with either one of them. Meyer trying to beat Marshall. Leaves it for Gildner. Looking for three. Got it. Her third three. What great rotation. Meyer takes it inside, waits for the defense to follow her, and finds Gildner open for the three. Miller with a block on Clark. Rebound by O'Grady. Clark for three. Having a tough shooting afternoon thus far. And the rebound taken by Gildner. Bulldogs motor up the court. Berg looks for three. That would have brought the roof down had that one gone down. Because that would have given Drake the lead. Now McCauley tries to do the same and cannot. And the rebound goes out of bounds against three. You know, after the, the 
Rebound by Miller. I think the Bulldogs maybe could have reset, settled down. Yeah, you want the big three, you want the crowd getting into it, but you've got to make the most of every possession. Good job of taking the defense with her and then repositioning as Gildner steps out beyond the three-point line. The Kenner Warnock back onto the court for Iowa, taking the place of Addison O'Grady. Little over two left to play in the quarter. Feet comes inside to Stulke. She drives, and she is blocked by Miller. Gets her own rebound, puts it up, and now she has a chance at an and one. Anna Miller has been so tough in the middle for the Bulldogs defensively. Had several blocks here in the second half. Gets one here, but Stulke stays right with it and gets the putback. And that foul going against Grace Bergen. It's her second. And Stolke trying to complete the three-point play and can't. She gets an offensive rebound, misses, and McCauley's there for the rebound. Inside two minutes in the third quarter. Hawkeyes by three. Miller looks inside. Marshall falls down. The shot won't go. Berg battles the rebound with Warnock, and Berg has it go off bounds, out of bounds off her. Bulldogs have Becker and Dinnerbeer back into the lineup. McCauley and Meyer will exit. Bulldogs rotating a lot of players in, trying to keep fresh legs in there, trying to keep the tempo up and push and keep that running game going. Warnock misfiring from three. Stolke tries to keep it alive. Marshall tries to keep it alive. Gilder tries to keep it alive. And it was last touched by Stolke or by Marshall, one of those two. Anyway, it's Bulldog basketball. Katie Dinnerbeer, seven for seven thus far, with 15 points, two assists, just one turnover, and she has a steal. Boy, they missed Anna Miller on the inside. Pass deflected, Berg tries to get it, but Davis is able to come up with it. Now Dinnerbeer tries to get it back, but Stolke comes up with it. An open look for Marshall for three. Miller grabs the rebound. Stulke tries to tie her up, and she does. And the possession arrow points the Bulldog direction. Allison Pullman wanted a foul on Stulke. Well, I have to say they're letting them play here they in this are. third quarter. And they are. You know what? These players are adjusting to it. You can see the battle on the inside. Anna Miller gets popped right there in the nose. That's the second time she's a little contact right in the face area just playing basketball getting in there and sticking your nose right in the middle of it well think of the pace of this game there have been 14 fouls called nothing against Drake five against Iowa yes they are letting them play here's Gildner trying to get some space to shoot a three but Davis is right with her shot clock to a dozen off the ball Nicole Brennan the official spots a foul Stolke with the foul. Her first, that's the fourth team foul against Iowa. So both teams now with four, but just 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. Gilner looks to trigger. Way out front, it comes to Miller. Berg works against Warnock. Pass goes inside. Dinderbeer puts it up and in again. She's perfect in eight tries. Dinderbeer, eight for eight. And the Bulldogs pull back to within one of Iowa, and Iowa will play for the last shot in the third quarter. What a great job by Dinevier posting up Gabby Marshall, two of the smallest players on the floor, doing battle in the paint. Caitlin Clark held scoreless in the third quarter by Iowa after 18 in the first half. Here's Sonano inside to score. She has not been held scoreless. She has seven in the quarter. And it's a three-point Iowa lead as we go to the fourth in this thrilling interstate matchup, the 54th meeting between the Bulldogs and the Hawkeyes. And again, when Iowa has needed a basket, they've gone inside to number 25, and she has responded. First, Dinnebeer has been amazing inside for the Bulldogs, has not missed a shot. Now, Sonano at the other end pulls the Hawkeyes with a lead of three as we go to the fourth, 62-59 Iowa. 5-0 in Nebraska. The 22nd ranked Huskers will be here next Saturday at 2 o'clock.
Drake right now trying to knock off the fourth ranked team in the country. Kaitlin Clark shut out in the third quarter, 0 for 5 shooting the ball. Denevere has been on her a lot of the day. And inside, there's contact. A game that has been seen very few fouls called. That is for a total that is only the 13th foul called in the ball game. And right from the beginning, the opening part of this quarter, Courtney Becker had the assignment on Sinano, and she was doing her best to try to keep her out of the post area. Becker committing her first foul. Shot won't go by Warnock. The rebound taken by Sinano. Clark with a long three, but right in her range, just having a really tough shooting second half. 0 for 6. Davis pulls up. She'll fire. She'll miss. And scooping up the rebound, Sarah Beth Gildner. Lead feed inside for Becker. Becker draws contact and gets fouled. Clark on the foul. Clark coming in from behind, smile on her face. I'm gonna get a look at it to see if she got a piece of her and doesn't matter if you think you did it, if the officials think you did it, that's what counts. Becker knocks down the free throw. She's kind of underrated off the Bulldog bench, but she's got four rebounds. She's got three points and an assist. Seems like when she comes in and if the defensive end does her job as well. And she little chases thing, down yeah, a rebound. At right on cue, little plays like that is what make her so valuable. And Dinnerville will go to the line with Warnock committing her third foul. Dinnerville saw it right away, saw that there was a driving alley for her to drive through, took it right at the defense, and Warnock doing what don't let him, don't give up the and one, so she really handcuffed her, didn't let her get the ball to the hoop. The only shot that Dinnerville has missed thus far was her free throw attempt, but she knocks that one down, and this one will tie the score. Game tied up for the fourth time. 62 all with 9.08 left in regulation. Warnock out, Davis in for Iowa. Hawkeyes coming off a 115 point offensive performance against Evansville, which set a school record. You know, and we were joking this morning, they're averaging after their two games, 101 points a game. Dinnerbeer with the steal. Dinnerbeer all the way. Misses her first shot from the floor today. Meyer tries to answer and can't. Becker can't save it, and it's Iowa basketball. Boy, well, golden opportunity for the Bulldogs there to get a big bucket after the steal. Four ties, five lead changes. Uh, Drake has led for 21 minutes, and Iowa for six, almost seven minutes. Bulldogs' biggest lead was nine early in the second quarter. Hawkeyes' biggest lead, four in the third quarter. Here's Clark. You can't keep her down forever, and after missing her first six shots of the second half, she nails that one. Just moving into that shot, able to get the floater and knock it down. Becker draws the foul, and she will go to the line with a foul called on Pete Martin. Becker doing such a great job of posting up, getting Martin on her backside, backing her down and calling for the basketball. Becker, an outstanding student who has been admitted to the Drake Pharmacy School and just when they hand you the white coat and they admit you to the pharmacy school, that's a major accomplishment. Grace Bird getting ready to come back for the Bulldogs. Becker knocks down a couple of free throws. And it's a one point game again. She will now leave in favor of Grace Bird. You know, you have to be impressed with the Bulldogs bench because they have come in with every substitution. They have not dropped off at all. And especially when Maggie Bear has been ridden with foul problems. McCauley picks up her second foul. You're looking down the stretch. Drake with two timeouts remaining. Hawkeyes with three. There's the foul. And that sends Clark to the line. 21 points for Caitlin Clark. We mentioned so pumped up about playing in her hometown. The third quarter, she probably would like to forget, but she's a player who can explode at any moment. And 
totally put a team on her back. Yeah, she's a player where you, you don't think, oh, she's having an off shooting night, just let her go, because she'll light it up in a hurry. Meyer finds Bear. Bear looking for McCauley underneath. And McCauley gets fouled. It's a Clark foul once again, that's her third. And trailing on the play as McCauley made the cut, she was in behind. Good look as McCauley cuts right in front of her and gets the push from behind. Break in the bonus on the next Hawkeye foul. Berg with the miss. Clark leads the break. Feeds Sinano, and Sinano gets underneath the basket and misses the shot, but you got fouled by McCauley. Getting back in transition defense, uh, McCauley gets right on Sinano's back, gets her across the arm, but what great court awareness to know that your teammate's cutting right there on your left shoulder to lead her with that bounce pass. Sinano, seven of eight from the foul line, misses for the second time. Her career high, 38 in her junior year against Purdue. She has 25 this afternoon. And she misses both free throws. And the ball tipped out of bounds. And it's gonna stay on the Hawkeye end. Great will make a change. Sarah Beth Gelder back in. Taylor McCauley goes out. Caitlin Clark inbound. 7.46 left in regulation. Clark found O'Grady. They go back to O'Grady on the post against Bear. Davis tries a reverse layup and hits it. Nice shot with Bear draped all over her. Yeah, doing a great job of protecting the ball as she went up, gets the reverse. Here's Berg taking it right to the rack and scoring against Martin. Grace Berg just that time just muscling her way in to score. Yeah, just imposed her will against Kate Martin, just able to take it up, get it off the glass. On the wing end is Davis. Well, if you look down low, Bears in front of O'Grady, leaning on one another, trying to get position. Oh, that has been a big battle. O'Grady sets the screen for Clark. Clark misses the layup. Clark tumbles to the floor. So does Bear. And let's see what the foul, if there'll be any foul called. Nope, just some inadvertent contact as both Bear and Clark went down. Great can tie it with the two, lead it with the three. Berg, couple of twists and fakes and fires and scores, and has a chance to put the Bulldogs to the lead as Martin Fowler. Clutch baskets by Berg here in the early moments of the fourth quarter. She repositioned herself down low, went the other way, went to the right side, got Martin to go that way, ducks back up and under and gets the contact, goes to the free throw line for the and one. Martin with three fouls leaves, Warnock with three fouls comes in. Sinano, a brief rest, and she'll come back for O'Grady. Berg, two of two this afternoon from the free throw line, an 81% foul shot shooter a season ago. Completes the three point play to give the Bulldogs the lead at 69 to 68. Dinabir has been with Clark all day, is forced to be turned over a couple of times. She finds Sinano, makes a terrific catch in traffic to score. That's between two defenders, able to catch the ball, step away, shoots a little fadeaway. Well, I'm not sure she, how she held on with those two defenders draped on her, but she did it. Yes, yeah, they had somebody in front and in back, and she was able to go up and get the ball and maintain possession. Ball inside intended for Berg. Warnock knocks it away. Berg goes to the court trying to get it back. Tie ball called. Possession error will keep it in the Drake end as Miller and Becker come back into the lineup. And Dindabir and Bear will leave. We're going to get a look at the pass inside. Here comes the backside help. She's able to step away from it and get it up over the rim. And now the Bulldogs need to be aware they have 11 seconds left on the shot clock. Gildner will inbound. Comes outside to Berg, nearly knocked away and is knocked away by Warnock. Big steal by Warnock. She drives, she scores. Big steal by McKenna Warnock to open a three-point Hawkeye lead. And that was something they worked on in shoot around this morning, the inbound plays of the Bulldogs and how they were going to defend it. 
Warnock, as you mentioned, sometimes underrated, but comes up with big plays. Here's the feed for Bird. She goes inside and gets fouled by Warnock. Warnock finds it hard to believe based on the expression on her face, and she's got her fourth foul. Bulldogs have really been concentrating on going inside to Grace Bird. And she has responded with the varying types of moves. Berg with 15 points. Hannah Stolke, the freshman from Cedar Rapids, Washington, replaces Warnock, who leaves with four fouls. Berg will shoot two. Grace Berg last year averaged 11 points a ball game. Thus far this season, 20 in one performance, and so far 15 tonight. So she is up her scoring so far. Seems to up her energy level so far this season. And we have an official timeout. It's going to be an official timeout. Media timeout with 5.43 to go in the ballgame. Lisa Luter trying to get her team back into the lead as right now her team's up by three. Now on the bench, sitting there with those four fouls, Clark still in the ballgame with the three. Burt looks for her 16th and 17th point of the ballgame. Berg now 4 of 4 from the foul line, 6 of 11 from the floor, 15 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, just 1 turnover. She knocks down both free throws. It's a 1 point game with 5.42 to play. Becker on Clark. Marshall guarded by Meyer. Bulldogs staying in that zone. They've got Miller manning the middle. Clark on the miss, the rebound taken by Anna Miller. Miller doing a terrific job on the boards, just four rebounds, but so often she is screened off and so somebody else could get the rebound. Breakout rebounding Iowa, 39 to 31. Lob comes inside and Becker will go to the line and Clark now does have four fouls. Becker doing a great job of Coming across, trying to get in the post. Clark just a little bit late, lagging behind and reaching in. Becker, five points and five rebounds off the bench for Drake. She can tie the score by hitting this free throw. That's only the third Bulldog miss from the line. They're 11 of 14. And back-to-back -back misses. Rebound by Stolke. Good box out by Stolke. Again, she's a terrific athlete, very explosive, and what a great future the freshman has. Here's Marshall looking in against Becker. Tries to get the ball to Sinano, and it's kicked by Becker, and so the shot clock resets. is down to 13, and it resets to 20. Bulldogs have done a good job adjusting now. Marshall hit a couple of threes. They're very aware of where she is on the floor, getting out and covering up. Barton back in. Caitlin Clark with those four fouls will sit out with 4.45 to play. How long she sits out will be an interesting question. The lob comes inside to Sonata. A couple of fakes on Miller and she scores. 29 for Monica Sonano. Berg calling for it on the left wing. Now Miller looking inside to Becker who can't be a Take away by Marshall. Tried to make that bounce pass in between two defenders. Just could not get enough on it. And the Hawkeye defense gets a hand on it and able to steal it. Davis cuts underneath. Has a block by Miller. And the Miller comes up with her fifth block of the evening. Berg in trouble. Almost lost it, but it was picked up by Becker. Again, Becker doing the little things off the bench for the Bulldogs. And the not so little things. Here's Berg with a drive and a miss and a foul called on Stolke. And that will be her second. Bulldogs are in the bonus for the final 346 in regulation. As Berg will go to the line. Berg tried to challenge Stolke initially. 
couldn't find anything, kicks the ball back out, and then again, challengers are again is able to draw the foul on her. Grace Berg has hit all five free throw attempts. And she knocks that one in. Not pretty, but it counts in and it counts just the same. You can use all parts of the rim, let exactly. it bounce around as long as it falls through. And that time it does not fall through. The Bulldogs struggling at the line here in the fourth quarter. They've been so good throughout three quarters and now struggling just a little bit as we get into the last few minutes of this ball game. Jane Clark with four fouls, not on the court. A Drake foul. And they call the hand check on Gildner out top. Her second foul. Bulldogs with four, so on the next one, the Hawkeyes will be in the bonus. There's Caitlin Clark reporting back in. Clark, a seven for 22 shooting performance, three of 11 from threes, total of 20 points. But Clark with only four in the second half. Lob for Sonano. She misses. And the ball is saved by Stalky, and she misses with a block by Bear with the recovery. Well, they just hung around the rim and waiting for the ball to come to them, stayed after it, and got the two points. Sonano now with 31 points. Bulldogs in arrears by four with three minutes left in regulation. Crowd chants loud, let's go Drake. Shot clock at nine. Bear takes it to the baseline. Bear with a layup to score. Sonano had to come out. Bear gave a nice ball fake, got her in the air, and hits the nice floater off the glass. Stulke against Berg. Iowa with the basketball and a two-point lead at two and a half left to play. Clark gets the screen, hits the three. Sonano with the screen. Clark gets a big three for Iowa. Just waiting up top, waiting for that screen to come. Gets a screen from Sonano, able to come off of it with a dribble and knock it down. Dinebeer working against Marshall. Marshall doing a good job trying to prevent Dinebeer from getting the ball. This time, though, Bird finds her, and Dinebeer will go to the line, drawing the foul against Marshall. But Marshall's really bad at trying to keep Dinebeer away from the basket, away from the paint. Clark gets the ball up top, asking for the screen, gets it. Dinebeer goes underneath, and that leaves Clark wide open. Of course, she's been the leading scorer in the country the last couple of years and does not lack for confidence. And why not? Dinnerbeer misses a free throw. The Bulldogs really struggling at the line. That would be their fourth free throw miss here in the fourth quarter. At a time they can ill afford to have that happen. Katie Dinnerbeer now with 20 points. And that equals a career high for her. Foul called on Berg as she reaches over on the pass at the high post for Stolke. Oh, Anna Stolke will go to the line. Just two out of seven on the season thus far for the Hawkeye freshman. And has struggled at the line, so maybe not a bad player to foul in this situation. And she hit that one with pressure. Drake trying to knock off Iowa for just the second time in 20 meetings. One more for Hannah Stalke. McCauley battles Sonano for the rebound. It's off Sonano. It's Drake basketball. 157 to play, five point Iowa lead. Bulldogs with this possession need to take their time, get a high percentage shot, and there you go. Doesn't get much more high percentage than that. A career best for Katie Denebeer. On that, her 22nd point. And Denebeer now 9 of 10 from the floor. Sonano pitches to Stolke. Stolke misses the layup. The rebound is battled for and is grabbed by Drake. And Stolke with a foul and Bear will go to the line. Or did they call it the other? Yeah, that's the way they called it. Yeah, I think Stolke reaches in, and I think Maggie Bear is going to step to the free throw line. Bear two of two today. Ball is batted around. Stolke comes in from 
The backside trying to strip her of the basketball and gets too much of Maggie Bear. Bear at the line, just a 60%er last year, but so far off to a better start at the line this year, and she nails the free throw. She has 11 points in double figures for both of her games so far this season. One more for the senior from Glen Ellen, Illinois. That's the Bulldogs' fifth miss of the quarter from the strike. Iowa going to take their time on this possession. It looks like the Bulldogs are switching up, going man for man. Sonato makes a catch and a foul called on the Bulldogs as Meyer tried to come in from behind to swipe it away, and she gets the foul. Sonano with a 31-point performance goes to the line. Just a little swipe at it by Meyer. Yeah, and they were trying to get, we kind of talked a little bit during one of the timeouts, that they're going to play behind Sonano. They have to have somebody come and dig down from the outside, maybe try to strip her of the basketball as she makes a move to the basket. Sonano 7 of 10 from the foul line. And she misfires. So the best she can do is give her team a one-point lead, and it's still a one-possession game for Drake with 1.16 to play. And you have to make sure you're boxing out as well. If this one comes off the rim, you don't want to give up an offensive rebound. It does come off the rim, and the Bulldogs do get the rebound. The person of Bear. Crowd is on their feet. Denevere tries to clear. Bear drives. Bear has an opening and scores. Nobody picked Maggie Bear up, and she ties the score at 80. See how the Bulldogs go defensively, and how Iowa is going to run their offense. You have to believe they're going right inside. Yep, and with good reason. Iowa's going to get a quick timeout. And I think the Bulldogs may try to advance the ball into the half court. Dribble down, kick it out to Bear. Sonano again has to come out because Bear can shoot it from three and able to drive right by, but they go right back into Sonano, who has been so efficient today. 49 seconds left in regulation. Remember, five of the last six games at the NAP Center in this series have gone down to single digits, and this one will too. Yeah, we, we knew that coming in. It's always a, a great ball game. High scoring, we're seeing a lot of points put on the board. It's hard fought. Very intense, and uh, every fan that is in here is getting their money's worth. Reset for you. There's the timeout situation. Both teams are in the bonus as far as the foul situation is concerned, and the possession arrow belongs to the Hawkeyes. Drake will play it out of the backcourt. Dinabir comes up the court. Marshall on her. There's Berg finding Bear. Bear again trying to get around Sonano. Now Gildner will pull up. Meyer with 15 on the shot clock. Vindebeer trying to get around Marshall. Puts the ball to the court. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Vindebeer finds an opening and scores. She just stuck right with it until she found her opening. And a timeout taken by Iowa. 82 all, 23.9 to play. And they're going to take the timeout. I think it's a full timeout, so they're going to get a long time to be able to draw this one up and talk about how they want to take this last possession. Dinabir with a good ball handling splits the defenders. Once she got by the two defenders, nobody was there to pick her up. Dinabir with an incredible career best of 24 has missed only one shot from the floor. She has been amazing in this ball game. And a lot of times you think of her as a distributor, getting the ball to her teammates on the inside. But she is a player in this ball game that has been the scorer. They have not found an answer for her. She has been able to break down this Iowa defense and get to the rim most of this game. So everybody in this capacity crowd, I'm assuming, thinks that Sonano will get the ball. She's been unstoppable inside. What do you think? 
You know, I think you have to go there. I think you have to get it in, because she's been able to get so deep into the paint that they're going to try to look for her. If they shut that off, you have to believe that they're going to get the ball in Clark's hands as well. And if you're the Bulldogs, what do you have to do to prevent Sonano from beating you? Well, I think, you, I think you're going to see them maybe go zone. I don't know. I, I think you go zone and then you could dive somebody down, get front and back coverage, try to front side and back side her, and not let them even enter the ball inside to her. But you also have to cover up because they're going to have a lot of other shooters on the floor. Marshall, you have to be aware of. Warnock, if she's back into this game here, and Clark out on the perimeter. No, free throw shooting is such a key. The Bulldogs have had 17 fourth quarter free throw opportunities and hit 11 of them. And that's what this game is going to come down to at the free throw line. 82 all the score, 23.9 seconds remain. Again, Hawkeyes one timeout left, break the two. Warnock takes the inbound speed from Marshall. Dinabair on Clark. Hawkeyes play for the last shot in regulation. 10 seconds to go. Now Martin looks in the corner for Marshall. Marshall puts the shot up, gets off. Rebounded by Sonano, we're gonna go to overtime. Overtime at the next center between Iowa and Drake with the score tied at 82 at the end of regulation. They were looking to get the ball inside to Sonano. Bear backed away from her, and Sonano hit the floor, so they didn't have that option that they wanted to go to. Gabby Marshall made a valiant effort to try to get that shot to go, but could not. It's the first overtime game in the series since Drake beat Iowa 75-72 in 2001. Here's the end of play in regulation. You see, Sonano fell down that time, working against Bear, so they could not get the shot to her, so Marshall had to take the shot. Right there, she was trying to back down. Bear steps aside, and Sonano hits the deck. Marshall doing everything she could, got the shot up, just a little bit off the mark. Clearly no foul there, just Sonano stumbling. And that's just, you know, two post players fighting for that position down low. Bear did the right thing, she kind of stepped away from the contact. And Sonano was bearing down so hard, trying to back down so hard. When Bear moved aside, she hit the deck. So as we go to the overtime period, remember, Caitlin Clark has four fouls for Iowa. McKenna Warnock has four fouls for Iowa. For the Bulldogs, nobody with more than three. Uh, and you have to wonder here in the Bulldog huddle if they think maybe early on in this overtime period, do you go at Clark? Do you try to pick up that fifth foul on her and see if you can get her out of the ball game early in the overtime? Drake comes out with Gildner, Berg, Meyer, Denebeer, and Bear. That's their starting five. Iowa comes out with Martin, Sinano, Clark, Warnock, and Marshall. That's their starting five. But again, two Hawkeye players with four fouls. A capacity crowd getting their money's worth this afternoon at the Knapp Center. And the Bulldogs with the opening pass. Dinabir goes for Bear. Bear trying to wrestle against Sonano. And Sonano battling inside and forcing the turnover. Bear trying to kick it outside to a three-point shooter. Sonano got her hand on it. And Bear put it to the ground again for the double dribble. Caitlin Clark challenged by Dinnerbeer. What a great matchup that has been this afternoon. Clark all the way to score. A steal by Marshall. You thought sometime today that might happen because that's what she does. It comes at a key time. She does it every single game. She is just so good about understanding and anticipating when to do that. Clark beats Sonano and the Hawkeyes score the first four in overtime. Yeah, you told me this morning that she said, watch for that. It'll happen at least once, and it did. And it did at a key time, too, for Iowa. Berg on the turnover with good defense by Warnock. I almost feel if you're Drake, you might want to call the timeout right there and settle them down. You don't want to get to the point where you go, okay, we got them to overtime. We got the fourth-rated team in the country to overtime. You don't want to give up in the end. I'm not saying they're giving up, but you don't want to have that letdown 
in the last five minutes. Here's Clark feeling it now, leaving it way short, an air ball. Bear tries to save it in bounds. Bird takes it away from Martin, who's got the broken nose and got another shot near the nose or in the mouth area, but no foul. Berg looks for three, and it won't go. Dinabir with an offensive rebound, stumbles but recovers. Here's Bear looking for three. No. And the rebound grabbed by Warnock. A couple of missed opportunities for the Bulldogs to cut into this four-point lead. Well, Martin checking your nose to see if there's any additional bleeding as she got bumped that time by Berg. Ball out of bounds. That turnover gives it back to the Bulldogs with 3.20 to play in overtime. And Becker back into the Drake lineup replacing Meyer. And now Martin's going to come out. Again, she got popped, if not in the nose, just below the nose. You see it right there, uh, probably in that nose area, certainly. Well, and I'm sure it's still very painful. And any time you take a shot to the broken nose, that is going to bring tears to your eyes. She was checking for blood. I don't believe there was any. Here's Dinabir behind the bear screen. It won't go. And the rebound is cleared by Molly Davis. So after two blowout victories by Iowa, they're being well tested today at Drake. A four-point Iowa lead. Just under three to play in overtime. Davis guns it on top. Clark trying to break down Dinabir, who swipes at it. Screened by Sinano. Clark can't get free because Dinabir's right back on her. It comes inside to Sinano. Bear falls down trying to defend her. And Bear gets the foul as well. And so Sinano will go back to the line. Tried to run that two-player game again, the pick and roll, and they defended it very well. Bear just leaning a lot on Sonano, trying to get the steal. Bear only five minutes in the first half with two fouls, but a terrific job she has done for Drake, staying in the ball game, making her presence felt at both ends of the court, and just now picking up her fourth foul. And that's one of the strides that Coach Pullman said Maggie Bear has made over the summer they need her in the ball games they can't have her in foul trouble and she did pick up those two but adjusted coming into the second half and played a long time before she picked up the extra fouls you wonder if fatigue becomes a little bit of a factor as both teams are missing free throws here in the fourth quarter in the overtime they were not missing in regulation now at the pace this game has been played and the intensity it's been played with you have to believe that it might be a factor and Dinabir, who had not missed a shot in her first eight, missing some layups there. And again, that could be a fatigue factor as well. Clark calls a play. Remember, Dinabir's had to work with Clark most of the day. So she's had a tremendous ball game and a great effort. But she's got to be weary. I think everybody on the court right now has to be worn out. Clark getting around Dinabir, shoots off the dribble, misses with four on the shot clock. McCauley gets the great rebound. Don't need the big bucket right now, but you need some kind of points in this possession. Plenty of time left as Becker drives, and Warnock fouls her, and that will be the end of the line for McKenna Warnock. She will foul out with 144 to go in overtime. 11 points for Warnock, eight of them in the second half. Becker has done such a great job putting the ball on the floor. Nice little crossover, trying to get inside. Goes up against Warnock and has her pick up her fifth foul. Becker misfiring on the free throw. Three of six here in the quarter and overtime from the free throw line for Becker. And if this one slips away from Drake, it's going to be free throw shooting down the stretch that was one of the factors. But it's not over yet. A four-point ball game as Iowa comes up the court. And again, they're going to take some time. They're going to want the ball in Clark's hands a lot. She directs the offense. Stolke's in to play the post on one side. Sonano on the other. He's a bluter calling out a set play from the bench. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Oh, looks like they... Want to clear out for Clark, but Dinnerbeer wouldn't let her. Clark's going to keep it. Clark goes underneath. Pitches for Marshall. Marshall with one on the shot clock. Misses it. Shot clock violation. Great basketball. I'm in a 13 to play. A four-point ball game. They wanted to take some time off the clock, but 
the Bulldog defense really did a great job of switching up, staying right on Clark as she kicked that ball out to Marshall, and they could not get a clean look at it. All starters on the court for Drake. Looking for three, Gildner. Rebound taken down by Kate Martin. A one-and-done situation for Drake. Big rebound by the Hawkeyes. Right now, the Bulldogs cannot afford to give up a three. Clark wants a three. Clark misfires on the three. Sinana with another rebound. That's a huge rebound. That offensive rebound gives them more time to work off the clock. Her 11th rebound to go with 36 points. Double-double for Sinano. Meyer fouls her former teammate Clark. You do not want to send Clark to the line, but sometimes you have no option. Well, she's the one that had the ball in her hand. She was bringing it out near the half court line and Meyer did the right thing. Need to stop the clock and preserve the time. Try to lengthen this ball game. So you have to do something and Clark had the ball in her hands. Led the nation in free throws made last season. She led the nation in a lot of things last year. Points per game, assists, triple doubles. In fact, she's a triple-double away from setting the Big Ten record held by a former Hawkeye, Sam Logic. We got a timeout with 34.7 to play. Iowa up by five points. We'll be right back at the Nap Center for the end of this thriller. This is the third overtime game in this series with the last two won by Drake in Iowa City. Those scores are 66-63, 75-72. We've eclipsed that a long time ago. Bird to inbound. Gildner, Denebeer, Bear, and Meyer, the starters on the court. Bear with four fouls. Deflection by Martin, but she can't keep it inbounds. So once again, Berg will inbound. Need to get a, a quick shot up here, get the score, call a timeout. Denebeer makes the catch. Denebeer darts inside. Is bottled up, so she'll find Gildner. Gildner for three, and she buries it. Sarah Beth Gildner brings the Bulldogs to within two with a three and makes it 88 86 Iowa. Well, that's a big shot they were looking for, and Gildner waits for the defense, gives the ball fake. Defense flies by, resets, and knocks it down. That's a big bucket for the Bulldogs. And in their senior year, and they know it's very early. Sarah Beth Gildner seems to be shooting with significantly more confidence. It seemed like last year she maybe pressed a little bit, felt like there was some extra pressure on her, but she is shooting the ball with a lot of confidence so far here in the early season. So it's Iowa basketball. Again, the position arrow favors the Hawkeyes. Both teams are in the bonus. And Molly Davis back into the lineup for Iowa after the timeout. 25.9 seconds to play, a two-point Iowa lead. Clark gets the inbound speed, and then Meyer fouls Davis. Meyer with her fourth foul, and Molly Davis will go to the line. She has shot only one free throw in the first two Iowa games this year, and made, him, and made it. She was trying to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker. Couldn't get rid of it before Meyer was able to grab her. So the Hawkeye newcomer misfires from the free throw line. So the best she can do, it'll still be a one possession game with 23.2 to play. Craig gonna get the timeout, move the ball into the front court. And they have to get a good setup for a good look at a three-pointer. Does it have to be a three at this point with 23 seconds to go? I, I think you have to go for that three right now. I think you have to shoot it early in the possession, not too terribly early, but you've got to be able to give yourself enough time if it comes off the rim to pull the rebound and get it out for another three-point shot. I don't know if there's enough time to get a quick two and foul or, or call your last time out. Uh, to get the clock stopped. So I think you're going to have to look for a three-pointer. Pretty much everybody that's going to come out of that huddle can shoot it from distance. 
Sinano and Clark have combined for 62 of Iowa's 89 points. The Bulldogs have all five starters in double figures, paced by Denebeer's career best 24. Just balance scoring, everybody chipping in, and, and uh, when they're on the floor knowing where they're supposed to be, getting the ball, scoring it with confidence. Clark with four fouls will defend the inbounds pass from Geldner. Denebeer fighting against Marshall. Meyer steps back, launches a three to tie it, in and out. And the rebound scrap, it's going to be Iowa basketball. That possession arrow is always big at the end of the ball game. You always take a peek at that and see where it is in the direction of Iowa. And I believe they're gonna call their last time out. 16 seconds to play, Hawkeye basketball. And again, by calling the timeout in women's basketball, they get to move it to the midcourt line to inbound. They got the good look, and Meyer, again, got Davis in the air with the ball fake and just came up a little short with that shot off the front of the rim. So as you say, the Hawkeyes out of timeout. The Bulldogs have won. Double bonus for Iowa, Drake and the double bonus on the next. But as you say, the significant arrow is pointing Iowa's direction. Well, and, and you've got to make sure here with this, you got to foul quickly as the ball comes in bounds. Doesn't matter who gets it. You just have to, you have to preserve time and then take your chances with whoever is on the free throw line. As we've talked about, there's been some fatigue here in this overtime game. You have to box out. You can't give up an offensive rebound. Iowa's going to look to get the ball in the hands of and Caitlin Clark, but there's all good free throw shooters out there. Bulldogs can't be picky on who they choose to foul. It'll be Molly Davis to inbound. Sonano, Martin, Clark on the court for Iowa. Defense! 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 And also there, as the ball intended for Clark, almost taken away by Gildner, who has to foul. Almost a takeaway by Sarah Beth Gildner. They had her draped on both sides, almost got the takeaway. Clark able to maintain control. I'm gonna get a look at it. You can see two players right on there. Gildner trying to reach in and take it away, and Clark able to corral that in, step to the line. Missed her last free throw, has missed a couple today, but nails that one in clutch time. 27 for Clark. Four of six from the foul line for the all-America Junior, she hits them both. Clutch free throws, makes it a two possession game with 13.6 to play. Need to get a quick score and call that timeout. Meyer has it knocked away by Davis. Davis will race up the court and get fouled by Gildner, but we're down to four seconds, and Iowa appears to be able to escape the nap center with another hard fought victory. The fourth ranked team in the country, the highest ranked team that the Bulldogs have played on their home court and just the second top five team they played with playing Notre Dame number one at one point when they played them a couple of years ago. The Hawkeyes look like they may be able to escape today with a victory. Davis with a couple of free throws in the overtime period and it's a Six point Bulldog deficit, three seconds to play. Drake will use the timeout, advance it to midcourt, and this will be the Bulldogs' last timeout. Bulldogs gonna take a shot at it, but down the stretch, it was those free throws that the Bulldogs in the fourth quarter in the overtime hurt them as they could not connect on, at the charity stripe. And hard fought game for both of these teams. Well, the way this one went to overtime was a terrific play by Drake's sophomore point guard. Let's take a look at our play of the game. Denebeer has had quite a game here against the Iowa Hawkeyes. She has done it by getting inside, great ball handling, a crossover dribble, splits two defenders, and gets to the glass to send this thing to overtime. And so much of the time, she and Clark have gone player to player. It's been a great matchup. It has been a great matchup, and that's just uh, in-state talent that they've kept at home. 
and two quality players from the state of Iowa representing their universities. No reason for the Hawkeyes to pressure defensively as Gildner will inbound with 2.9 to play. And Iowa will go to 3-0. and Here's Berg with the dribble. Now Meyer with a three. It's kicked out. And Iowa hangs on in Des Moines to win 92 to 86. Well, we knew coming in this was going to be a very good game. They always are. It doesn't matter if they're playing in Des Moines at the Knapp Center or over in Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. These two teams get after it. They're great shooting teams, good defenders, and this is everything that we expected from the fourth ranked team in the country and the Bulldogs pick third in the Missouri Valley. There were a lot of incredible individual performances in this one. Let's take a look.